Last Sunday in Bible class, we saw a list of 12 things that, that Richard t said that Jesus was doing on earth today is essentially the, the thing. And I, I was inspired by the list. I was uh, really thankful for that list. And so I thought it'd be good to do a series of those 12 lessons, just make a lesson out of every one of those things. I think they each stand big enough to do that. Now, whether I have the legs to stick with this series and do 12 uh, lessons in it, I don't know, but we're going to do number one tonight and uh, just see where we go from there. I don't want to pigeonhole my, ourselves, but uh, we'll do this. And so I'm going to do something a little bit different as far as a sermon, and I'm going to give you sort of machine gun style a lot of scripture. And, and then at the last part of the uh, sermon, we're just going to reason from what we've read, right? Rather than do a scripture and talk about that and do another scripture and talk about that, I'm going to hammer you a little bit with one thought, uh, it's not me, it's the b biblical writers, and, and we'll, we'll see if we catch on what the one thought is. I'll probably put a little vocal emphasis on it, so you'll probably get it, right? And then we just want to reason from that. Romans chapter 12 and verse 5, So we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members of one another. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 22 through 23, And he put all things under his feet and gave him his head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 4, There is one body and one spirit. Just you recalled to the one hope that belongs to your call. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 and 12, And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and shepherds and teachers to equip the saints for works of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 15 and 16, Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is head into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint, with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Ephesians 5, verses 29 and 30, For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church, because we are members of His body. Colossians chapter 1, verses 24 and following. Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in Christ's affliction for the sake of His body, that is the church, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God that was given to me for you to make the Word of God fully known, the mystery hidden for ages and generations but now revealed to His saints, to them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. We proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone mature in Christ. For this I toil, struggling with all His energy, that He powerfully works within me. 1 Corinthians 12, 27, Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. So, I don't know if you caught on, but we are the body of Christ. And, and, and the statement that was made, and I'm rephrasing it a little bit, but uh, just the word order, but was Jesus walks the earth today through us. I, I think that if we look at what was just said, that we are the body of Christ, then I think the statement or the title for our lesson has to be true that Jesus walks the earth today through us, much like He did in the book of Acts. And in that lesson, Richard taught about Acts chapter 1, verse 1, where Luke says in the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach. With the implication that this book that he's writing now, um, the one that followed the gospel of Luke, is now the book of Acts. And he says, essentially, I'm about to write to you all that Jesus continued to do and to teach. Now, in chapter 1, he's going to be taken up to heaven. So is there just one chapter on that, or is there 28? And I think we would agree that there's 28. So let's begin to reason from that. I better keep this out. There's a few notes I wanted to uh, look at on some of those verses, and we have time, we will. But there's a phrase that I've heard. It's called the second incarnation. And so what does that mean? It's not a breakfast cereal or a drink, right? Uh, it, it, it's, well, 
the idea that God, Jesus, became flesh and dwelt among us. That was his incarnation, God becoming flesh. And so there's an idea here that he's become flesh again, not in the sense of him coming a second time in his fleshly body, but where is he at currently? How is he on this earth? Well, through us. He's incarnate on this earth. He's in physical form on this earth through us, the church. And so some have called it the second incarnation. But I think it begs a question. And that question to me, at least one of them is, what is Jesus doing today? If it's true that in the book of Acts it was about all Jesus began to do and teach, does He continue today to do and to teach? Does He continue to have some activity? And so we might ask ourselves, what is He doing today? And I think one of the answers we could give, He's certainly ministering on our behalf. We talked this morning about He's interceding. The Spirit intercedes for us. He's there at the right hand of the throne of God interceding for us. He's ministering on our behalf or interceding on our behalf to the Father. I don't think there's any doubts that He's in heaven commanding angels and sending them on missions. There's no doubt in our passage this morning that He's working all things together for the good of those who love Him or are called according to His purpose. Jesus is busy and active. I have no doubt. But what is Jesus doing in us in the world today? I, I think... On one hand, Jesus certainly has an influence that's beyond our scope of understanding. How can I answer the question, what is God doing? What is Jesus doing today? I don't think I can fully explain it. I don't think I can fully understand it, so therefore I certainly couldn't explain it. He's doing more. And yet at the same time, these verses make it really clear that He has chosen for us to be His body. Said more simply, we are His arms, we are His legs, we are His mouth, we are those things. It's how He's chosen to make Himself known in the world through us. And that's interesting. So, in some ways, the answer to the previous question is somewhat answered in asking ourselves, what are we, the church, doing? I don't think that ultimately Jesus is limited by us. I, I don't think that we, uh, even though if we're negligent, I don't think we can thwart the will of God. He, he's going to carry out His will. Uh, when Jesus said, if these are quiet, the stones will cry out, right? So, hey, command your disciples. I mean, they're, they're praising you, giving you praise. Don't, tell them don't do that. Hey, if they're quiet, the stones will rise out. He says, I'm raise, able to raise up children of Abraham from the stones. I don't, he's not limited by my lack of activity, but he chooses us. Out of all the ways that God could, could continue to carry out his will in this earth, as Jesus ascended back to the Father, he chose to do it through us. He chose to do it through the church. And so we looked at, uh, there in Colossians 1, 27, the mystery which is Christ in you. Uh, the you there is plural. We ought to use the Texas version, Christ is in y'all, right? That's the way it ought to read. Christ is in y'all. And, and then he goes to the singular. We proclaim warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present every one mature in Christ. But it's a corporate idea first. Christ is in y'all. Christ is in y'all who are the body. Christ is in y'all who are the church. And so He's in us. And we corporately make up this body. And He works in us. Some of these passages talked about how that He is the head of the body. Uh, and, and, and we are that body that, that, that carries out what the head wants to do. I, I think one of the problems that we have is that this idea that we are the body of Christ is certainly a spiritual idea, is it not? We are the body of Christ, and it's a spiritual idea. And I think in some ways we're tempted to think of it as a, maybe a symbolic thing or an abstraction of some kind. But we literally are the body of Christ. Not in the same sense that He had a body, but it's not just a symbology. 
It's not just an illustration. We are the way He's chosen to move and do and express Himself in the way that He's chosen to do it. He chose to do it through the church, and He calls it His body. Go back and look at every one of those verses we looked at and tell me where the figure of speech is. None of those passages read in such a way that we're like a body for Him. It's not a metaphor. It's not a simile. We are the body of Christ. It's a real thing. And so it becomes difficult because in one sense it's, it's a spiritual concept. We're not a physical body in the sense of Him having a body. He came in the flesh. But we corporately make up what is now referred to as the body of Christ. And certainly the language is very concrete, even though the idea there is certainly spiritual. We're the body of Christ. And if we're the body of Christ, I think it it stands for us to ask some questions. What are the implications of us being the body of Christ. I I do admit that we sometimes handicap Jesus as being the body of Christ. Do you agree? Maybe stated another way, do you think there are things that Jesus would want to do in this community that it's not happening in at least the moment that He would like it to happen because we're inactive? That we have the opportunity to do much more than, than what we are doing. And, and so we have the opportunity to do more than even He did while He was on this earth because He now can work through each one of us. And that's an interesting concept. The body that He has now, the body of the church, is capable of more than Jesus was capable of working through a single body in His ministry. Think about it. How many Christians are in on the earth? And, and, and what if... What would happen if every Christian realized the truth that they were part of the real body of Christ and as Him as our head and and we allowed Him to do as much as He wants to do through us as His body? What could be done? Are you following that? In fact, Jesus said to His disciples, I don't remember if it was John 14 or John 16, start in 14, read through 16, you'll find it that when He left, He would send another, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, and He said, you'll be able to do more things than I am, you know, is the idea. You'll be able to do more. And so here was the Jesus in a body. Here was Jesus sent to heaven and, and sending His Spirit into and upon the twelve, and, and, and through the Holy Spirit, the twelve were able to do more than the one Jesus. It's still Jesus doing it. And then as the church grows, on the first day there's 3,000. Now Jesus is working through 3,000. And then 5,000 are added. And this thing grows and grows and grows. And how many Christians are there today? I don't know the number. Do you know the number? But what if everyone realized, every one of them, every individual in it that's a member of this body, a, a part of the body, realized they were a part of the body of Christ, and they were saying, you know what, I need to make sure that Jesus is able to do what He wants to do in His body. I'm going to do my part. If he wants to wiggle his finger and I'm a finger, I'm going to wiggle. And if that's multiplied millions of times, what could happen if he did what he wanted to do? He wants to minister to the rest of the body. I don't know what I am. If I'm a mouth, a spleen, an appendix, I don't know what I am. But, but I do know this, that He wants through me to minister to the rest of the body. You know, if I got, I've been having a little pinched nerve in my shoulder. I wake up sometimes and it hurts. And when I wake up in the morning, I reach over there just like that and I rub that thing. I, I minister to the other members of my body. I get hungry, I eat, I get thirsty, I drink in all those ways. But it's not just that He wants to minister through me to one of its members to all the other members. But he also wants to minister to those who are outside the body. I think that's interesting. He wants those who are outside the body to come into the body, to become a part of the body. And he will minister to them, even if he has to work around me, or even if he has to work around us. 
Is that a sad statement to you? I don't think that I can thwart the will of God. I think He will do what He wants to do. He's, he's, got, he's all powerful. And yet He's choosing to use me and in the micro, in the short term, I, I can kind of thwart that and hold that back. He's not able to do all He wants to do because I'm not willing. Ultimately, if I stay in the way, He'll move me out of the way. He'll find someone who will do it. When we do anything to His praise, when we do anything to His honor, it's actually Him working through us. That's, that's an interesting idea. Look at Colossians 1.29 again, where Paul said, For this I toil, struggling with all His energy that powerfully works within me. We might think of Ephesians 3, 20 and 21, where Paul said he's able to do far beyond all we can ask or imagine. And then he says, now to him who is, uh, no, what is it, how, how does it say, uh, I've lost it and I didn't bring my Bible up here, right? Uh, but, but he's at work through the church, right? He's able to do all, more than we can ask, imagine, but he's going to do it through where? Through the church, through his, his body. When you elders get that, you read those two verses, all right? Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. We usually don't have a reader in the middle of the sermon, but it's okay. We can do that. And how many passages did we read in chapter 1, chapter 4, chapter 5, where the church was the body? And in the middle of all that, he's saying, look, whatever you can ask about, whatever you can imagine about, he wants to do those things. He wants to do them through His power, through the body. So I think it's interesting. If I minister to you, I'm ministering to the body of Christ, but ultimately it's really Christ ministering to the body of Christ. If I reach out into the community and I minister to those who are outside the body and I'm trying to reach out and draw them into the body, it's actually Christ reaching out to those who are outside of His body, trying to bring them. He's working through me. And it really becomes an interesting thing, and we'll talk about it at some point if we continue the series, Good Lord Willing, the Creek Don't Rise, right? But if we continue in this, then there's the concept that when we worship Him, He's at work in us. That He's, in a sense, bringing praise to Himself through our worship. Pretty interesting. The last real concept I want to give us in this is the idea that Jesus walks the earth today through us, His church, ought to thrill us. I mean, we ought to shout hallelujah, shouldn't we? I mean, I almost want to sing the song. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. We don't shout hallelujah a lot. Talking to Nadia this morning, told her I appreciated the amen. She goes, I want to shout hallelujah. I try not to get out there too far. Well, well shouldn't the idea, the, the, the idea that Jesus walks the earth today, that we become His hands and feet and mouth and all the other parts of the body, that we are the body of Christ in this earth, should that idea thrill us? Should we get up in the morning with an idea that we're just thrilled over that and shout hallelujah? Should, shouldn't also that this idea, shouldn't it convict us? Shouldn't we think, you know what? I'm a member of, I'm a part of, I'm a, I may be the pinky of the Lord's body, the church, it's His body, and he, He's got all these things He wants to do, and I've got all these things that I want to do. It ought to convict me. That I'm a member of the body, the church. I ought to mourn all the times that He wanted to move, and I remain still. I, I, I ought to mourn all the times that he wanted to move this direction and I wanted to move that. And the idea that Jesus walks the earth today through us as church ought to inspire us. Let us find all the ways that he wants to walk through the world today through us. Let's discover it. Let's find out those Ephesians 2.10 works that he wants us to do. Let's find out what it is that he would really want to be happening in Wills Point, Texas, and 
have the body of Christ in the place where He wants it, doing the things that He wants, allowing Him to work through us. I think there's something interesting if we take this idea that Jesus walks the earth today through us and really follow it to all of its logical conclusions. We are corporately the body of Christ. That's a real statement. It's a concrete statement. It's a spiritual concept. But it's not an illustration, it's not a metaphor, it's not a simile. And if we are the body of Christ, may it inspire us, may, may it thrill us, may it convict us. I hope it does. Well, there's 11 more of these that are all based on this idea. All based on the idea that we are the body of Christ on the earth today. I rephrased it. Because I wanted to say Jesus walks the earth today through us. It's all about Him. It's His will. It's His power. It's His plan. It's His concept. He's the one that placed us in the body. And, and I've got a response here. I, I need to do something. I need to shout hallelujah. I need to mourn. I need to do all those things. But it all starts with Him. And anything, anything anything we might accomplish, it'll be because He worked through us. And so I don't know if that thrills you. That lesson kind of thrills my soul. And it takes a lot of the fear away from me. I don't need to be strong enough. I don't need to be wise enough. I don't need to be skilled enough. I just have to be a part of the body of Christ and let Jesus do what He does. It's kind of an interesting idea. Now that may make me get out of my bed, get out of my driveway, get out of my comfort zone, get out of a lot of things, but it's still Him doing the work. Lesson is yours. Won't keep you. God bless you for being here this evening. Thank God that the weather got better. Glad that you're here. Don't let the hour pass if you need the prayer of this congregation. If we can serve you in some way, won't you come while Van leads us in this song? Happy